with firings in WWE and more. This is Wrestling Hub. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we get into the rest of the video, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Hub and turn on all notifications to stay up to date with everything in the world of pro wrestling. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Wrestling Hub Official and follow us on Twitter at Wrestling underscore Hub. During an NXT conference call, WWE Senior VP of Talent Development Creative, Shawn Michaels, talked about NXT call-ups to the main roster, saying, I do know that per tradition, as you say, usually around WrestleMania is when people feel that those call-ups and things like that are possible. That's my feeling as well, that's my hope. But right now, there's been no information given on any of that kind of stuff right now. And I'll say, look, everybody is concentrated on WrestleMania. This is a big year. This is the big year for all of us here in WWE and so all hands are on deck to make sure things go as well as they possibly can. I'm just doing my best to man the ship to the best of my ability and I don't want to be applying any ointments. So right now, whatever it is they're ready to talk, we're obviously here and I'm ready to go. Michaels also provided a status update on Dragunov and Satomura, who have not been on programming recently, saying much like several months ago, we want them here and love having them here. A lot of it is availability, a lot of it is as you said visa issues a lot of it also that is a big career move and life difference those are all things we want people to consider before they make that move nothing would thrill me more than to have Elia and miko here on a regular basis they are phenomenal talents we're thrilled about gallus being back and tyler Bate being back as far as who is to come in the future a lot of that is up to the talent themselves and also there are visa issues but we're waiting on a long-term commitment from some people and we understand that's not an easy decision to make. Michaels would also explain why the men's Royal Rumble didn't have NXT stars. Look, it's made by the guys upstairs. Obviously, the main roster folks, we obviously let them know who we have available. I'll say this. I don't want to insult anybody's intelligence. Yes, I give whatever advice, opinion, recommendations. I recognize sometimes it matters a great deal and other times it doesn't. I think they had a pretty good idea of who they wanted this year. Obviously, they asked us our opinions and we certainly gave them. This year, was a matter of who they wanted and a couple of backups for alternates and stuff like that just in case something were to happen they only needed women with my understanding again we had plenty of the men for us it was a great opportunity for nxt to have anyone up there anything that has to do with our talent going up there it's more often than not a main roster call On that same media call, Michaels was asked about former NXT Women's Champion Mandy Rose being fired from WWE due to her online adult content, as he said, obviously it's not the ideal situation. I will say if I'm allowed to say for the record, I didn't fire her. I can't fire anybody. The only thing correct about any of that was I handle creative. It was unfortunate. I think Mandy was fantastic for us. I absolutely enjoyed working with her. She was a phenomenal champion. We would have loved things to have gone differently and been able to build our story with with Roxanne, but I was put in a position where I was made to make a call creatively. What I've learned doing this job was nothing comes before the brand, and we have to put those things forward, and that's what we did. Roxanne was certainly what we were going to go regardless, but we just had to cut a few weeks earlier than we expected to. The great thing is we're back on course, and I will say I think the world of Mandy Rose, she was nothing but phenomenal with us and will miss her. With him making his debut for Impact Wrestling as an authority figure, Santino Morella said this about stepping back in the ring, telling S.E. Scoops, I don't know when I will be distributing or administrating the first Cobra, but it's always with me. I think I can wrestle a little bit. I've got some injuries, so it really just depends on how meticulous I am with my rehab. I have a bad back, so I'll really need to warm it up. I can't do it consistently, but I can do a match here or there if need be.
as Cody Rhodes has won the Royal Rumble and will challenge Roman Reigns for the undisputed title at WrestleMania 39, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter pointed out that the entire storyline that brought Rhodes to WWE did almost have to result in him winning the title his father never could win. But that didn't have to take place at Mania, just had to take place at some time. The fact WWE wanted Dwayne Johnson in the spot and even contacted Steve Austin for the spot tells you they weren't married to the idea of Rhodes having to headline the show or win the title, at least from Reigns. Talking about the behind the scenes ongoings during the most recent WWE pay-per-view, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful reported that Vince McMahon was not seen at the Royal Rumble, and his creative influence was not felt on the show. Those that we've heard back from have stated that from a day-to-day -day and weekly basis, the atmosphere is much more laid back. One of the only reminders of Vince's influence remains the Vince's office directional sign that hasn't been changed since he left, but points to a section of the backstage area that is completely different. One source says, it's not like anyone is fearful of bringing up his name, but generally, most haven't really asked much since Triple H, Nick Khan, and Kevin Dunn held meetings assuring the roster that McMahon wouldn't be involved in creative or talent relations. One talent that had noted to us that the process of the Rumble itself was the easiest in a long time without Vince McMahon at the helm, and that there were way less last-minute changes. That talent also said that you can't really count 2021 towards that because of COVID, but that this year's was a dream compared to last year's nightmare. Talon also spoke of the main event segment being a new age curtain sellout, with many people quietly around monitors watching the Bloodline Sami Zayn angle play out. For an interview from the Bubba the Love Sponge show, Hulk Hogan was asked about the worst thing he had heard about himself as he said, I think the worst rumor that I ever heard about myself was my wife accused me of having an affair with Bruce Barber Beefcake. It's a crazy story. It was right after Brutus's paralyzing accident and Brutus had to sleep in a chair, straight up with his head packed in ice. And Brutus had this really good looking girlfriend. And I guess while everybody was sleeping, Brutus called her over and all of a sudden my ex-wife's grandmother came downstairs and she saw this blonde head going up and down on Brutus's lap. This blonde head was giving Brutus oral sex. The next morning when I came down for breakfast, Linda's whole family was mad at me and I couldn't figure it out. The grandmother Nini goes, I saw you giving Brutus oral sex. They thought it was my blonde head, but it was really Brutus the Barber Beefcake's girlfriend. So that, without a doubt, is the worst rumor I've ever heard about myself. My ex-wife accused me for years and years and years of being gay with Brutus. Then after that, she accused me and Bubba of being gay. Unfortunately, the mother of Dwayne Johnson was involved in a car accident as The Rock took to Instagram to give fans an update. Thank you, God, she's okay. Angels of Mercy watched over my mom as she was in a car crash late last night. She'll survive and continue to get evaluated. This woman has survived lung cancer, tough marriage, head-on collision with a drunk driver. She's a survivor in ways that make angels and miracles real. Thank you, LAPD and LAFD, for being so caring and focused. Thanks for staying on phone and talking me through it all. I got one parent left, so if you still got your mom and dad make sure you hug them hard because you never know when you'll get that 3 a.m call we never want to get During an interview, WWE CEO Nick Khan was asked this question about Vince McMahon. Can you tell investors with certainty that Vince will be willing to end his involvement with WWE following a transaction if that gives shareholders the most value? Khan replied, yes, without question. He's declared it to the board. He's declared it to us in management. It's all about shareholder value. Obviously, he is a shareholder. So it's not about what role he'll have. It's about maximizing that value opportunity. Talking about a partner for a sale, Khan said, a partner partner that has more than simply deep pockets. So a partner that understands the media business, that's in the media business, that understands how to further monetize the media business, that certainly understands our product, our intellectual property, what we're doing with it, what can be done with it, media rights, both domestically and internationally. We see the international growth opportunity is huge. So in terms of choosing the right partner, these are all things that we're going to be looking at in terms of who can accelerate our business. And again, what's the best value for our shareholders? older.
Speaking of a sale for WWE, it seems the company is firing employees with the Wrestling Observer Newsletter noting, there have been a lot more cuts on the corporate side in the past few weeks in different departments since the return of Vince McMahon. The belief is that these cuts are being made to lower the cost to get the company ready for a sale. Matthew Drew, who is the Senior Vice President of International, was the biggest name let go. He came from DAZN in 2021 of June, which means he was a Nick Khan hire, since Khan hired a number of people from DAZN in 2021. His job included managing global media partners, devising international strategy for overseas live events, digital, consumer products, and new revenue opportunities. In some unfortunate news, pro wrestling legend Lanny Poffa was passed away at the age of 68, as Hacksaw Jim Duggan revealed on Facebook, with a very, very heavy heart. I've been asked to let everyone know about the passing of our friend and colleague Lanny Poffo, the genius. Rest in peace, Lanny. WWE would release a statement on the matter as it reads, WWE is saddened to learn that Lanny Poffo, best known to sports entertainment fans as the genius, passed away at 68 years of age. The son of Angelo Poffo and younger brother of WWE Hall of Famer Macho Man Randy Savage, Lanny Poffo had a style all his own. Arriving in WWE in 1985 alongside his brother, Leaping Lanny Poffo was one of the first high flyers in WWE. While he achieved some success as a fan favorite, reading his own poetry and throwing frisbees to the crowd, he reached new heights as the genius while managing Mr. Perfect. WWE extends its condolences to Poffo's family, friends, and fans. Many in pro wrestling would react to this. X-Pac wrote, Rest in peace, my friend. The Iron Sheik would say, Lanny Poffo, my brother, I love you forever. Give Nikolai, Randy, and Elizabeth hug for me. Tommy Dreamer said, It has been reported Lanny Poffo has passed away. I always enjoyed his work in the ring and that he had poem for all of us. The Blue Meanie wrote, Aw, oh, man, what a great guy. I had the pleasure of doing a movie with Lanny called Curse of the Wolf, and he was such a pleasure to be around. Rest in peace, Lanny Poffo. Virgil wrote, Lanny Poffo, the genius. Man, I am so sorry, brother. Love you and Randy more than you will ever know. Rest in peace. Bobby Fulton wrote, I'm very sorry to hear the passing of Lanny Poffo. Great guy and friend. Prayers for his family, friends, and fans. And Dave Meltzer said, very sorry to hear about the death of Lenny Poffo. Best to family and friends. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all later.